Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Don't ever approach the word of God again like some obligation that you owe God to read a chapter a day as a duty. You approach it as your life. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. In the beginning before all time was the word Christ. Now that's the first part I want you to get is that the word and I'm not just saying this book but the words the inspired word of God that's in this book is Christ. That means that we should approach it very reverently and understand the value of the Word of God. Now, many of you that are here today, you do value the Word of God because you've taken time on a Friday morning, of all things, to come and hear the Word of God. And many of you took vacation time to come and hear the Word of God. But there are millions of people, hopefully and prayerfully watching right now, that To you, it would be the craziest thing in the world to actually take a day of vacation to go and hear somebody talk about the Word of God. Oh, you may have a Bible laying somewhere in your house collecting dust, and maybe once in a while you, I don't know, open it up and read Psalm 23 because that's one that you've heard a lot about. But what does the Word of God really mean to us? I believe that it should be our life. I believe it should be our spiritual food. And just like you eat natural food, and you know if you don't eat natural food, you're going to become weak, I believe that we need to understand that this is the food, literally the food that we need to stay strong spiritually and to keep our uncrucified soul under control. How many of you have got a soul that needs to be under control? And this has the power. There's power. Power. In the Word of God. You know, I was doing an interview last week. Believe it or not, an eight-hour interview. And, you know, I'm talking to people who just don't, they don't get it, you know. And... So they ask me these questions like, well, how do you know that this is true? I said, because it works. It works. If you apply these principles in your life, it works. I mean, God was bold enough to say regarding giving, try me. In Malachi, try me. He said, if you bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse, I will open the windows of heaven and I will pour you out a blessing so great you cannot contain it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Your land will be blessed. Try me. Prove me, he says. Now, you know, one of the things that they were talking to me about was the whole giving aspect. And... You know, even, and I understand, people don't understand. I mean, I, I'm beginning to understand that they really don't understand. So it doesn't really make me aggravated anymore. It's just like I wish that they understood. And so in the process of trying to explain that, I said, try it. Try forgiving people instead of hating them and see how much happier you are. Just, just try it. And just see what happens if you pray for your enemies instead of hating them. Watch and see what God does in your life and even what God does with them. And this book, this wonderful book that I love so much has changed my life. I pray that in some way as I share this message today that I can get the point across to people who don't understand it, that there is help and healing and hope and life and change available for you in the Word of God. Try it. I dare you to try it. 
Instead of just sitting back and saying, well, I can't understand the Bible. Well, get a translation you can understand and read it. It will be absolutely wonderful. We had a testimony on television recently, and I don't know if y'all got to see it or not, but it was just one of the absolute most wonderful testimonies that I have ever heard in my whole life. And it was about a, a Jewish man who knocked over a stack of books in uh, a Borders or a Barnes and Noble, and my Battlefield of the Mind book happened to be in the stack. Well, as he was putting them back up, kind of halfway in an attitude of making fun of me, he started flipping through the book. Well, it ended up interesting him, so he bought it and snuck it into his house because he didn't want his Jewish wife to know that he was reading anything by a Christian author. Well, he didn't know it, but his wife was sneaking around reading the Bible and she didn't want him to know that she was doing that. So here they both were basically looking for their Messiah. They were looking for answers, and both of them trying to hide it from the other. Long story short, he read the battlefield of mine. In the process of that, he got a Bible. He began to read the Bible. They were gloriously saved. Everything's cool. So he's got, now, now just listen, this is wonderful. He's got, I, I mean, his mother, I forgot what, how old he said she was, but she was like pretty old. She was in a retirement home, nursing home. And so he begins to try to tell her that he's found his Messiah and, and uh, that Jesus is really real. And, you know, she's just like, don't want anything to do with it. No, 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 no. So he, he trying to get her to read the Bible and she says, no, 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 no. So he was smart enough to pray that if he couldn't get to her, that God would send somebody that could. So... Turns out that a nurse that's there in the nursing home is a Christian, and she left her Bible there one day. And so the woman begins to read it. Her son just said, well, Mom, since she left it, just, just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just read it. Just read it and see what you think. So she began to read it, and... This was so precious the way he said this. He said, you'll find out that it's a very Jewish story. You'll, you'll see your rabbi in there. You'll see the fair, I mean, you'll see the law. You'll see it all. It's in there. I mean, it's, I mean, this is a Jewish story and you, you need to read it. And so this is what he said. If you, how many of you saw that program? He said, my mother said to me eventually, he was there all the time and we missed him. And she gave her life to Christ. And so, you know, it, it may just be possible that there's answers for you in here that have been there all the time and you've missed them. You've just missed them. So I'm imploring you and begging you to give the Word of God a chance in your life. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. All right. So, in the beginning was the Word. I think that's where I was at, right? In the beginning before all time was the Word Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. He was present originally with God, and all things were made and came into existence through Him, and without Him not even one thing that was made has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And I always like to say there is life in the Word of God. Matter of fact, at one time we called our television program and our ministry Life in the Word. And we changed it for some various reasons. For one thing, the world didn't get that, so they kept sending me mail to Life in the World. <laughs> when it was Life in the Word. And so I thought they might get enjoying everyday life. You know, sometimes you got to kind of cater to the people out there that need help but don't know they need help. So we kind of unspiritualized the title thinking, well, everybody wants to enjoy their life. And I thought that was a good move. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out, absorbed it, or appropriated it. You know what that means? This is light. And anytime you take light into your personal darkness, 
The darkness cannot remain where you take the light. The light of the Word of God will destroy the darkness in your mind, in your emotions, the darkness from your past, the darkness in your finances, the darkness in your relationships. This is a real book with real answers for real people that produces real fruit. We're not just here kind of being religious together. This is real. And the Word of God has the power to change your life. Jesus said in John 6, 63, my words, they are spirit and they are life. These words are not ordinary words. Amen. These words are supernatural, power-filled words. And they have the ability to go in, you're listening, they renew your mind. You, sh you should see what I see from up here sometimes. When I'll say something and all of a sudden somebody bursts into tears out there. Hope has hit their soul. I saw this morning as Martin was leading us in worship, and those songs are all full of the Word of God. And I saw people literally on their hands and knees weeping and sobbing as they realized that there's hope for them through God. And I want you to know wherever you're at in this world and wherever you're watching from, whatever your country you live in, you are not hopeless and you are not helpless because there is a God that is alive who loves you personally loves you and wants to help you and you can have a relationship with him and you can know him through studying the Word of God amen I just had this little kind of mini vision type thing yesterday and so I went out and got this stuff I thought maybe it would would help me a little bit here so you go in Starbucks in the morning or whatever you're getting on a plane and People got all their choices of stuff to read. <laughs> so, okay, let's read the paper. Ah, boy, it's got a lot of good stuff in it. Tiger Woods, masterful return. <laughs> well, we could read about that, his masterful return at the Masters Golf Tournament, or we could open this up and read about the master. But you know what, occasionally I will see somebody in Starbucks reading their word, and I just want to go over and congratulate them. <laughs> and just think, you brilliant, wise, intelligent human being. But for every one of those, you see thousands upon thousands that are reading this stuff. Boy, there's some, oh, now here's a good article. Concern about another dust bowl on the plains. Man, that'll help me. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, here's a picture of an old human skull. Really, man, that's kind of spooky looking. <laughs> Fossils offer a window, a look into human evolution. So I can read this article, and it'll tell me that there is no God, and God didn't create me, and I come from some bug that crawled up on a beach somewhere at some time. <laughs> and just kind of happened and man I knew that there was no hope for me and now I am sure because there is no God and there is nothing and who knows oh and here's another story about a televangelist and his airplane so that can make everybody mad and cause nobody to want to give into the gospel and then here's a here's a nice article on whales and then there's some stuff about the federal government Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's a bunch of stuff we can buy. We can go buy those new cars and get in more debt and <laughs> on and on and on. Okay, let's see what else we got. Ooh, let's look at the financial section. Wow, the Dow may hit 11,000, but. <laughs> oh, this was so ridiculous. It's like, well, things are looking up, but don't you get excited because they're probably going to fall apart right after that. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what the article says. But I could get this out. <laughs> and I could find out that all things are possible with God. And no matter what the Dow report is, God is on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Whom shall I fear if God is on my side? Oh, man, I don't want to lose all my good stuff down here. I got to 
because there is some stuff in here you have to know, I'll tell you. This, your life would not be the same if you didn't read this stuff that I saw this morning. So I got me some magazines and just, I mean, on every other page, there's a woman that's about half naked. So that's real encouraging. You know, she's got on her bikini and all of her stuff hanging out and, you know, you can, well, anyway, I better not even go there, but. Okay, new mistress tells all. <laughs> My two-year affair with Jesse. You know, on and on and on and on. Let's just see. We'll just, we'll just do the thing. Let's see. Ah, exclusive bodyguard tells all. The real, and I won't name the star's name, is exposed. She's having kinky sex with her ex. Boy, I'm getting cheered up. I'm feeling good, ready to face the day. Woo! I feel like a woman of power for the hour. I can face anything now that I know that. She rages at her staff. She's actually totally psychotic. Here's another movie star that's dying to be thin. She's killing herself so she can be thin. Uh, another divorce drama. Another somebody else comes out of the closet thing and, you know. <laughs> Well, if it ain't bad enough, let's get one of the, <laughs> let's get one of these things that you can get at the grocery store. Now that's got, okay. Dog fighting scandal, I'm interested in that. Pit bulls in bloody match to death. Whoa, I am encouraged. I mean, how stupid can you be and breathe? Now, you know, when you look at it like I'm looking at it right here, I mean, it makes a whole lot of sense to us. But you know what? I am just, I am furiously mad at the devil because he has hidden the wonderful beauty of the Word of God from people, and they actually are deceived into thinking that they cannot understand the Bible, so there's no point in reading it. Well, that is absolutely not true. If you approach this book in prayer, asking God to give you understanding, He will help you understand it. And even if you don't get it all with your mind, it'll get down in your heart and change your life. Amen? I mean, we're talking that the Word took on flesh and came and dwelt among men. The Word, parentheses, Christ was with us from the beginning. Not one thing was made without Him. Through Him all things were made. He took on flesh and tabernacled to live among us. He died, this Word died for our sins, went to the cross died in our place, rose from the dead, and now wants to live in our heart. Don't ever approach the Word of God again like some obligation that you owe God to read a chapter a day as a duty. You approach it as your life. This is my life, this is my food. This is what makes me strong. This is what saves me when I'm in trouble. This is my light in darkness. This is my hope when I'm hopeless. I want to see people respect and love the Word of God. You know, I'm long past caring what people think, and I'll just tell you that there are times when I kiss my Bible. I mean, I just hug it sometimes and kiss it. It's like, oh my gosh. I remember what I was like before this word. I remember when, if I didn't get my way about everything, the only response I knew was to get mad and be miserable all day. And this has set me free to not get my way and still be happy. Do you know what a big thing that is? If you cannot get your way and still be happy all day? Some of you are like, no, I've not gotten there yet. Well, <laughs> as you continue <laughs> in the Word of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy that the Word convinces us, rebukes us, corrects us, warns us, urges us, and encourages us. 
In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says it teaches us, convicts us of sin, and trains us in righteousness. Very valuable book. The Word talks to you. Have you ever had the Word talk to you in the midnight hour? Or you're right in the middle of getting ready to make a decision, and all of a sudden some word that you've heard pops up on the inside of you, and you're like, well, I guess I better not do that. <laughs> Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm teaching this weekend about what it means to be in Christ. And my point with this message today is the whole thing about being in Christ is to be in the Word. For that to be a major part of your life. Not just to read a little bit of it every day, but to love it, to meditate on it, to live by it, and to make it the one standard for your life. I opened last night with a couple of scriptures, one about how in order to really enter the kingdom, to enter it, not just to have it as a legality in your life, but to enter the kingdom, you must approach it like a little child. And another scripture that Paul talked about where he said, I'm so afraid that Satan is going to deceive you and draw you away from, listen to what he said, the simplicity that is found in Christ. And what is that childlike simplicity that God wants us to have? It's so simple. This is God's Word. I believe it above all else. I believe it. It doesn't always make sense to me, but I believe it. And it works in my life. I believe it more than what I think. I believe it more than what other people tell me. I believe it more than how I feel. Now. I'm not always 100% successful at that, but I've come a long way. I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Yeah. Amen. You know, the Israelites were delivered out of bondage in Egypt, and that's kind of equivalent to us being born again. When you receive Christ as your Savior, boy, initially you just think you'll never need another thing in your whole life. It's just like to even feel that peace that you feel when you initially have your sins forgiven. It's just like, how many of you remember those, that little romance in the beginning of your walk with God where you just, you didn't care about anything. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> praise the Lord. And you begin to find out about the promises of God and you see all these great things that are available to you. And sadly, you have to take a little trip through the wilderness to get there. And the wilderness was a literal place for the Israelites, but for us, it's kind of the journey through the soul. It's through that, that realm of soulish, carnal living, because we are spirits, and that's the deepest part of our being. But the next layer of our being is our soul, and that's our mind, will, and emotions. And then we have our body. Well, God's whole idea is to come and do something in our spirit. What's in our spirit begin to make its way out through our soul, get in our thinking, get in our emotions, get in our heart, get in our life, get in our conversation. He wants to just get into everything. Have you noticed that God wants to mess in all your business? Even stuff you'd rather He leave alone. He wants to mess in that. And so there's a work, after you receive Christ as your Savior, a work has to be done in your soul. You have to learn how to think different, talk different, act different, and on and on and on. Well, we might call that the wilderness journey. And it's all about stubbornness and rebellion and how long it takes us to give in and give up. And the quicker we let God do what He's going to ultimately do anyway, the more peace we have. Because I can just tell you, and if you don't know this, this is going to be a real revelation to you. If God has told you something or you've seen something in the Word of God that's a certain way that God wants something done, it doesn't really matter whether you agree or how you feel about it. You will either give in or you will be miserable. It's just that simple. And the sooner you let God be God in your life, the happier you're going to be. You know, as believers in Christ, we hear a lot about the Word of God. But I really want to make sure that you understand that there is nothing more precious than the Word of God. It shows us the way. It shows us the way to live the life that God wants us to live so we can have the joy that He wants us to have. 
The Word of God encourages us, it corrects us, it convinces us, it even rebukes us, it chastises us, but it lets us know who we are in Him. And that is such a glorious thing to learn.